<coughs> Shalom to the elect of Israel, to the hopeful elect of Israel, you Hebrew Israelites, you so called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, West Indians, and Haitians. Gotta give all praises and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shah, Bahashim, Rikakurash. The bonus to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well, who teach well, who are the apostles and elders of all of Israel, really can accept it or not. And a sincere salutation to all the occupation pushing this truth and believing this truth throughout the four winds of the earth, the entire world, waking up the whole flick. And shalom to the Agwath who are listening learning, the few sisters who are listening learning. I'm Isaiah from the GMS Orlando camp coming at you another lesson in truth, facts, faith, and edification. Another daily edification. Lord's willing. It's beautifying. <clears throat> and I'm going to say this again. I give all praise and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shah, the Most High, the Heavenly Father. His Hebrew name is Yahweh. Not Yahweh, not Jehovah, not God, not Elohim, not Most High, not Lord, not Yah, not Jah, not Ahaya, not Allah. It's Yahweh. And his only begotten son name in the Hebrew is Yahweh Shah. Now Yahshua, not Yeshua, not Jesus Christos, not Jesus Christ, not Serapos Christos, not Yeshaya, not Yehoshua, it's Yahweh Shah. So we're going to give all praise and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shah, Bahashim Rikakurash. So this is another lesson. Lord, wouldn't it be edifying? And I titled this, You Lied About the Lies That You Lied About. And that was a, a little saying that Elder Monaco Zakba did um, another uh, couple nights ago. He just made that statement. And I, when I heard it, I said, that's a title for a lesson. The actual title for the lesson, I was going to title it Bridge Over Troubled Waters. Because these devils, Esau, Edom, the Edomites, the so-called white man, which is the wicked according to the Bible, all they do is forge lies. They are the liars <laughs> that forge lies, man. So Lord, what should be edifying? Now, um, this book is titled, Who is Esau Edom, right? I had ordered this book. It was on Amazon for like $3,800, $3,500, $3,800, almost $4,000, right? So for some reason, the book is now only $18. I don't know why they dropped it back down, but for whatever reason, the water you have about your mouth shot. Nah, we know the truth is out according to the Bible. We don't need this book. To prove that Esau is Edom, even though this guy Charles Wiseman wrote the book, right? Then you got the uh, the book that William Beeston wrote, which I have in my backpack. Um, the Roman Empire, the Empire of the Edomites, right? We don't need these books to prove that Esau is Edom, the so-called white man, the Edomites. But this book was thirty-eight hundred dollars, thirty-five to thirty-eight hundred dollars on Amazon. Now it's only eighteen dollars. So when I seen it, I was ordering something else for my car, and this popped up because I ordered all my books from Amazon, right? My King James 6011 Bible, my Apocrypha. So it said you already ordered these books. Here is another book that you can order. And the book was on $18. Now, this book has been on Amazon for almost $4,000, right? The, the elders, Elder, Elder um, Malcolm, he was always bring out that, um, when he first found the book, the book was only twelve dollars. I think it was like twelve, fourteen dollars. He said they jacked the book up. Why is this book back down to eighteen dollars from last year, a year before? Because the truth is out, man. Nobody care about this book, right? It's good to have in the arsenal, but everybody know who's Esau Edom. So I'm going to read the back of the book, and I'm going to pull out a couple of. Um, not even a couple of chapters, just like one page. Not even a, in this book of Esau Edom, who is Esau Edom? All you need is page five. Page five clearly tells you that Esau Edom is the racial stock of the right race. That's all you need, right? But let's read this because these is this is the devil that forges lies. The lesson I did about a month or two ago, their only job is to vex, accuse, and destroy us, so-called Negro, Latino, and Native Americans. West Indians and Haitians. The Esau Edom only job is to vex 
and accuse and to destroy us as much as possible. But what do Yahweh shall say? Except those days shall be shortened, that shall no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened, right? So they ain't going to get to do what they want to do because when you read in Job 14 and 5, in Job 21 and 20, they say their days are at a limit, right? They can't pass these days. But show you how wicked these devils is. Let's read this. This is the back of the book. I'm going to read this. It say, in the ancient time, in the land of the Bible, it say, in the ancient time, in the land of the Bible, over 3,700 years ago, Rebecca, the wife of the patriarch Isaac, was informed by God that she would give birth to twins whose faith, whose faith would be as diverse as their character. The birth of these twins, Esau and Jacob, and the ensuing destinies would have the most profound impact on future events in the world. That's cold in itself, on future events in the world. It reads, this analysis, this analysis, uh, analysis of the history of prophecy of Esau and his descendants will unveil many of the problems in this world. It say many of the problems in this world and will bring a new perspective on wars and conflicts, World War I, World War II, and World War III. That's uh, Revelation 9 and 12. One war is passed, and behold, another will come quickly, coming shortly, right? Matter of fact, I don't want to butcher it. Let's read that real quick. It's Revelation chapter 9 and 12. It says, one woe is past, and behold, there come two woes more hereafter, right? Revelation 11 and 14. The second woe is past, and behold, the third woe coming quickly. So it says again, this analysis of the history and prophecy of Esau and his descendants will unveil many of the problems in the world, which who controls the world? The Job 9 and 24, right? The earth was given to the hand of the wicked. What does it say in Isaiah 24 and 5? Let's read this. Isaiah, I said, man, just the back of this book, just a whole lesson, just reading the back of it. Isaiah 24 and 5 said, the earth also is defiled under the inhabitants thereof because they have transgressed the laws, changed the ordinance, broken the everlasting covenant. Therefore have the curse devoured the earth and they that dwell therein are, are desolate. Therefore the inhabitants of the earth are burned and few men left. So it say again, this analysis of the history of the prophecy of Esau and his descendants will unveil many of the problems in this world. Why? Because they transgressed the laws, broken the covenant, they broken the everlasting covenant, changed the laws, transgressed the laws, changed the ordinance, broken the everlasting covenant. So it say, this analysis of the history and prophecy of Esau and his descendants will unveil many of the problems in this world and will bring a new perspective on wars and conflicts, media bias, Zionism, political conspiracies, anti-Semitism, economic problems, and the Jewish issue. You see that? That's cold. It says this material will also explain why one group of people have made concerted efforts for the establishment of monopolies, um, uh, yeah, monopolies, hate laws, world government, um, communism, abortion, interracial marriages, usury, and anti-Christian policies. The ancient and pronounced struggle that prevailed between Esau and Jacob still exists today and is causing the world to be turned upside down. Why? Because of Esau and Jacob, man. This is the lowest movie. Everything about the world is about Esau and Jacob. 
The other 16 heathen nations are just casualties of war and collateral damage. This is the last line. The question of who is Esau Edom undoubtedly involves the most stupendous drama ever enacted in the annals in the annals of man. That drama is presented here to help us better understand God's plan for man here on earth. Now, this is page 99, right? I'm going to read some of this. It say, when Esau heard that Isaac had given Jacob the blessing of the birthright, he cried out with an exceedingly great and bitter cry. He got a parenthesis, Genesis 27, 34, which everything is accurate. This is exactly what the Jews do when they hear someone say they are not Israel, <laughs> which means they cannot have the birthright. They cry out bitterly against them with wails of anti-Semitism. Meanwhile, these Edomites seek ways to kill the real heir to the birthright. It's a, many throughout history have recognized this peculiar characteristic, characteristics of the Jews to destroy Christians, but could never supply an adequate ex explanation as to why. Without understanding who the characters on stage are now or how they relate to the birthright, the play being acted out in the earth becomes quite confusion to most observers. And that's facts, man. You see? <laughs> and this book was written by Charles Wiseman, man, who was what? An Edomite. Now, this is the only page you really need in this book, but this whole book is fire, man. It's fire. This is page five. Okay. This is page five of who was Esau Edom. Let's read this. It's a life and history of Esau. Esau was born in the Salaki. Esau was the firstborn of Isaac and thus was heir to the birthright. Derived from the direct racial lineage of Adam to Noah to Abraham. Thus, Esau was racially an Adamite, a Shemite, it's a Semite, but a Shemite, and a Hebrew, the racial stock of the white race. You see that? <laughs> the racial stock of the white race. Who is Esau Edom? Esau Edom is the racial stock of the white race, man. Now, this is. These devs, hey, and the elder Nazaba said the other day, you lied about the lies that you lied about. <clears throat> so let's get this. This is Psalms 58 and 3. And it reads, the wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they be born speaking lies. Their poison is like the poison of a serpent. They are like the deaf adder that stops her ears. All these devils do is forge lies, right? And who they forging the lies on? They forging the lies on you so-called Negro, Latinos, Native Americans, West Indians, and Haitians. Now, this is Psalms 15 and 20. Thy citizen speaketh against thy brother. Thy slander is thy own mother's son. Who is it talking about? Esau Edom. Now I was going to tie this lesson um, bridge over troubled waters because their whole their whole identity, everything about these devils is to vex, accuse and persecute you, man. Right? Their whole job is to destroy to the best of their ability, so-called Negro, Latinos, Native Americans, West Indians, and Haitians. That's why they are put here on earth, man. They are the Lord's sword. They are the, the, the left hand of the Lord, man. Their job is to judge, is to punish two-thirds of Israel, man. Right? Now, this is um, Psalms 
Psalms 119 and verse 69. Because this is what they do day in and day out. It say the proud have forged lies. So lock it. The proud have forged a lie against me, but I will keep thy precepts with my whole heart. So though they slander us, man, we got we to gotta maintain our integrity, right? Because these are the ones that the Lord set up over us, man, as the basis of men, right? As the, the whooping stick of the Lord. <clears throat> Another name for them is troubled waters, right? This is, um. Uh, let's get this. Job 13 and 4, and it reads, But ye are forges of lies, you are physicians of no value. So, so-called Negro, Latino, Native Americans, West Indians, and Haitians, knowing this, we knowing this, right? These devils is pissed off, man. The truth is out. What did the Lord say? This is Matthew 10, 26. It reads, Matthew chapter 10, verse 26 reads, it says, fear them not, therefore, fear them not. And to say, it tell you in 2 Timothy 1 and 7, the Lord didn't give us the spirit of fear, right? For the power and the sound mind. It say, it reads, fear them not, therefore, for there is nothing covered that should not be revealed and hid that should not be known, right? This is another one in Luke chapter 8 and 17. And it reads, Luke 7 and 18. It's a lucky. Like no, Luke 8 and 17. I was in the wrong chapter. This is Luke 8 and 17. It reads, For nothing is secret that shall not be made manifest, neither anything hid that shall not be known and come abroad. All we had to do it's just be living, man. The Lord is going to make manifest these things, right? Second Thessalonians 2 and 3. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. We had to fall away, right, from our lineage, our heritage, who we were, right, our customs, what we was about. We had to fall away from that, right? That's why in Acts 1 and 6, there are apostles, actually, Havashi, was he about to restore Israel? Was he about to restore the kingdom to Israel? Right? And he said, it's not for you to know at this time. As a matter of fact, let's read that to make this point. This is Acts 1 and 6. We had to fall away, right? It say, when they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, would thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said unto them, it is not for you to know the time or the seasons which the Father had put in his own power. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the utmost part of the earth. What's the utmost part of the earth? Where we at right now, man, Babylon the Great. So Yahweh shall told the disciples when they asked him, Lord, are you about to restore the kingdom again to Israel when he had risen? He said, no, it's not for you to know that right now. Hey, just go teach the word, man. That's basically what he said. He said, but you shall receive power after that. The Holy Spirit shall come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the utmost part of the world, the utmost part of the earth, which is here. Babylon the Great and on this side of the world, man, Puerto Rico, Cuba, Dominican Republic, uh, South Central and North America. OK. Right. So he was telling them it's not for you to know at this time about the kingdom. Of Don't worry about that. Just go teach the word. So. We had to fall away first. Let's read this again. Second Thessalonians 2 and 3. These all link together perfectly, man. It said, let no man deceive you by any means, for that they shall not come except they come a falling away first. What did the Lord tell Jeremiah? In Jeremiah 74, 17 and 4. Even thyself shall discontinue from thy heritage that I gave thee. Right? What did he tell, what did he tell Daniel? Let's get this. Before we finish making the point, this is Daniel 12. This is what the Lord told Daniel. And he said, this is Daniel 12 and 9. He said, go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed 
up and sealed to the time of the end. Right? Read the point. Verse 13. But go thy way till the end be, for thou shalt rest and stand in thy lot at the end of the days. Right? So these things had to play out. Us falling away and the man of sin being revealed. So here we go. Second Thessalonians 2 and 3. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that they shall not come except they come a falling away first. We had to fall away, right? We had to, 70 AD had to happen. All the empires had to happen. The Babylonian Empire, the Medo-Persian Empire, the Greece Empire, the Roman Empire, Babylon the Great, North America had to happen first, right? It say, except there shall come a falling away first, and that the man of sin shall be revealed, the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, right? In 2 Thessalonians 2 and 8. And then shall the wicked be revealed when? In our time, okay? And then shall the wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth. What's the spirit of the Lord's mouth? His prophets. Amos 3 and 7. Sure the Lord will do nothing, but he revealeth his secrets until his servants, the prophets, right? 1 Corinthians 14 and 32. The spirit of the prophets are subject to the prophets, right? So, and then shall the wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, right? Let's get a precept on that. It's Obadiah 1 and verse 6. How are the things of Esau searched out? How are his hidden things sought up? How? Through the spirit of the Lord's mouth. 2 Thessalonians 2 and 8. And then it says, how are the things of Esau searched out? How are his hidden things sought up? 2 Thessalonians 2 and 8. And then shall the wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth. So how do how has Esau been made manifest? Through the spirit and power of Yahweh Shema Vashah, through his servants. Wisdom, not to understand that he has given them to search these things out, man. Right? Paul said, again, it said, except that come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. What Yahweh Shah said in Matthew. Let's get this. This is Matthew 22 and 19, right? But it's verse 18. It says, But Yahweh shall perceive that wickedness and said, Why tempt ye me, ye hypocrites? Yahweh shall say, Show me the tribute money. And they brought unto him a, him a penny. And he said unto them, Who is this image and superscription? They said unto him, Caesar's. Then said he unto them, render therefore unto Caesar the things which are Caesar's and unto power the things that are God's, right? The Lord said, bring me the penny. Whose image on it? It was Caesar. Whose image is on the money today? Beautiful question. Beautiful point. Whose image is on the money today? Caesar's. Esau eat them, right? They have been revealed, man. All the things that they have done, how his things searched out, his hidden things sought up, man, through the spirit and power. How about Shema Shah? Romans 15 and 4 say what? Romans 15 and 4. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. You see? So the man of sin had to be revealed, right? Who is Esau Edom? Esau Edom is the so-called white man. The racial stock of the white race, man. And you got scholar. When you go and get this um um uh, Elder Monarch, Elder, Elder, Ma, um Salakia, Elder Malcolm always go into this 1925 encyclopedia, right? It tell you that um that Edom is modern day jury, man, right? Meaning they are the so-called Jews today. Edom is modern day Jewry, man. Right? In the 1925 encyclopedia, man. So, and I pulled it up one time on Google. It, 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 it'll pull it up for you. You can read it yourself, man. 
1925 encyclopedia, man. It'll tell you that Edom is modern day jewelry. You can pull it up yourself anytime. Now, this is Genesis 36. Let's read this. Genesis 36 in verse 1. Now, these are the generations of Esau. Who is Edom? <laughs> Who is Esau Edom, man? Okay. Now, these are the generation of Esau who is Edom. This ain't, it, hey, it's not rocket science, man. This is verse 8. It says, Thus dwell Esau in Mount Seir. Esau is Edom, and these are the generations of Esau, the father of the Edomites, in Mount Seir. These are them. Let's read this again. Page 5. Again. It says, Esau was the firstborn of Isaac, and thus was heir to the birthright, derived from the direct racial lineage of Adam to Noah to Abraham. Thus was, it said, thus Esau was racially an Anamite, a Semite, and a Hebrew, the racial stock of the white race. Now, this is an Edomite that wrote this book. And I got the other book in my backpack, the Roman Empire, the Empire of the Edomites, man. Okay? The Lord had them to leave breadcrumbs so we can know who they are. Why? Because they had to be revealed first to fall away, and then the man of sin shall be revealed. What's the revealing? That they are the wicked. Right? All they do is go back and forth through the earth and do wickedness. Now, the Lord say it's going to come a time on the earth. When it's going to be what? Jacob's trouble. Who shall push Jacob's trouble with the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shema It's going to be the so-called white man. This is Psalms 124 and 1. Listen to this. If it had not been the Lord Yahweh who was on our side, now may Israel say, if it had not been the Lord Yahweh who was on our side, when men rose up against us, then they had swallowed us up quick when their wrath was kindled against us. Don't I say the same thing in 2nd Ezra 16, starting at verse 68? Let's read it. 2nd Ezra 16 and 68 reads, For behold, the burning wrath of a great multitude is kindled over you, and they shall take away certain of you and feed you being idle, with things offered unto idols, which is what? Ultimately, the RFID microchip. Back in Psalms, read this again. Psalms 124 and 1, and verse 2. It said, If it had not been the Lord Yahweh, who was on our side when men rose up against us, then they had swallowed us up quick when their wrath was kindled against us. Then the waters have overwhelmed us. The stream had gone over our soul. Then the proud waters had gone over our soul. Who are the proud waters? Esau Edom, right? That military power, that sword. To do what? To bring down wrath, man. You see? Their only job is to bring wrath, man. This is Psalms. That's why you got to repent, convert, to be healed, man, that you may have a covering. This Psalms 32 and 5. I acknowledge my sins unto thee, and my iniquity have I not hid. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord Yahweh, and thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin. For this shall every one that is godly pray unto thee in a time when thou mayest be found. Only the righteous is going to pray to Yahweh Shem Only the hopeful elect. The ones that's what? They have a contrite spirit, man. They sorry for what they have done. Now we know we screwed up. For this year, everyone that is godly pray unto thee, in a time when thou mayest be found. Surely in the floods of great waters, which is who? Esau, Edom. They shall come in like a flood. They shall not come nigh unto him. They don't come unto you. How about Shema Right? Right? <laughs> 
thou art my hiding place, thou shalt preserve me from trouble, thou shalt compass me about with songs of deliverance. See, these devils, the forges of lies, the slanderous tongue, their job is to vex, accuse, and destroy you, man. That's why I say in Revelation, the accuser of thy brethren is taken down, man. He's going to be destroyed. That's a future prophecy. The point is about the floods of great waters, right? This is um, Psalms 144. Listen to this. Psalms 144. You know what started at verse 7? It's like you just left the plantation a while ago. Psalm 144 and verse 7. It reads, Send thy hand from above, rid me, and deliver me out of great waters. Who was the great waters? Esau Edom, man. These devils are going to come in like a flood. It says, Send thy hand from above, rid me, and deliver me out of the great waters. From the hand of strange children whose mouth speak of vanity, and their right hand is a right hand of falsehood. You see, these devils. It's all about lies and falsehood, slandering and accusing, man, vexing and destroying. That's their only duty to the earth, man. This is um, Psalm 69 and 14. And it reads, Deliver me out of the mire and let me not sink. Let me be delivered from them that hate me and out of the deep waters. Let not the water flood over. It say, let not the water flood over me. Salakia. Let not the water flood overflow me. Neither let the deep swallow me up. And let not the pit shut her mouth upon me. These devils, the Lord said, these devils, it's like water, man. Right? Raging. Water, man. Their whole job is to try to drown you, man. They're trying to drown us. This is Isaiah 59 and 19. And it reads, So shall they fear the name of the Lord, Yahweh, from the west, and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord, Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh, shall lift up a standard against him. We know this is going to happen. We know that the elect is going to be covered, man. Right? Because I tell you in, in, in Psalms 27 5, that's what it reads. For in the time of trouble, which is what? Jacob's trouble. He shall hide me in his pavilion, which is what? A covering. A secret place. A, sa a safe haven. In the secret of his tabernacle, Shall he hide me? He shall set me up upon a rock. So you see, that pavilion, that covering is what? Yahweh Shema Washa. This is John chapter 10 and 28. It reads, And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. That's what Yahweh Shah is saying. It's verse 29. My, this is what Yahweh Shah saying. My father, which gave them me, is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand. So the elect of Israel is in the hands of Yahweh Shah, and Yahweh Shah and the elect of Israel is in the hand of Yahweh, right? But the point is, these devils are number liars, man. They are forges of lies. They are physicians of no value. Listen to this. This is um, Ecclesiastes, also known as Sirach, in the Apocrypha, 51 and verse 2. For thou art my defender and helper, Yahweh Shem and hast and has preserved my body from destruction and from the snare of the slanderous tongue and from the lips that forge lies and has been my helper against my adversaries. Right? These devils. Gave us the whole rundown. What did the Lord say? This is Psalms 
64 and 8. Let's read verse Psalm 64 and 7. It reads, But power shall shoot at them with an arrow. Suddenly shall they be wounded. This is an arrow. Hold on. Salaki. Let me get this book. Salaki. Let's get this book real quick. <clears throat> This is another arrow. The Roman Empire, the empire of the Edomite. Okay? This is an arrow. This is a major arrow. This is another arrow. Who was Esau Edom? Psalm 64 and 7. But power shall shoot at them with an arrow. Southern shall they be wounded. So they shall make their own tongue to fall upon themselves. Charles Wiseman and William Beeston. Charles Wiseman and William Beeston have made their tongues to fall upon themselves, man. Okay? Who is Esau Edom? The racial stock of the white race. Thus saith the Lord. Lord, witness edifying. Got to give all praise on and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shah, Bahashim, Rekha Quraysh. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, who will, who teach well. What apostles and elders of all of Israel, whether they can accept it or not. And a sincere salutation to all the oxen pushing this truth and believing this truth. To the four winds of the earth, the entire world, waking up the whole for the leg. Shalom to the Awatha who are listening and learning. You few sisters who are listening and learning. I'm going to get you brother precepts, as a matter of fact, before I close out. This is Yike Wild Judah Israel, Jeremiah 49 and 17. Also, Edom shall be a desolation. Everyone that goeth by it shall be astonished and shall hiss at all the plagues thereof. Now, that verse right there is the same thing that happened to the that is the same, so like it's the same thing that happened to the Israelites. The Lord said, We shall be astonishment. They in, in I forgot what chapter they in, but it said they hiss. It's in lamentation, as a matter of fact. They hiss and, and did the same thing to us, man. So again, Jeremiah 4 9 17, and Edom shall be a desolation. Everyone that goeth by it shall be astonished and shall hiss at all the plagues thereof. That's what happened to us. And it's in the book of Lamentation. They did the same thing to us, man. Okay. The brother Yaquab Judah Israel put up Amos 1 11. Thus said the Lord Yahweh, for three transgressions of Edom and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof. One, because thou did pursue your brother with the sword. Two, and did cast off all pity. Three, and his anger did tap perpetually. Four, and he kept his wrath forever, man. Okay? This is Yaquab Judah Israel. Job 20 and 5. It reads. It say that the triumph of the wicked is short and the joy of the hypocrite, but for a moment. Facts. So you see, these devils know who they are, man. It's you, so-called Negro, Latino, Native Americans, West Indians, and Haitians, that don't want to accept it. But the Lord, the Lord shot at them with an arrow, man. He wounded them. So they'll make their own tongue to fall upon themselves, man. Right? And there's other things, there's other books, man. They're telling you who they are, but you won't accept it. Why? Because you trust in oppression. Hey, so Lord was edifying. Oh, let's get this, as a matter of fact. So all these devils got left here is what? Um, I forgot the guy's name that made the quote. I did a lesson on it uh, last year. He said, when a battle is won, right? Oh, no, it's a lock you. When a debate, when a debate is won, when a debate is won, slander become the tool of the one that was defeated, right? When a debate is won, slander become the tool 
of the one who lost the debate, man. So, all Esau and Edom have is what? The only thing they can do to the Hebrew Israelites, right? Stop them with great millstone, with the apostles great millstone, is to slander us, man. But that's a part of persecution, right? It's a part of being demonized. Because that's all they have. They have lost the debate. Christianity, Christianity has lost, man. It's a wrap. It's over. What is let's read Second Corinthians, as a matter of fact. Second Corinthians 10 and 4. It said, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through power to the putting down of strongholds. To the putting down of strongholds. This truth has pulled down every stronghold of religion, right? Only ones that's gonna be deceived and be bugged out are two-thirds. Casting down imaginations. Religion is an imagination, man. This world that we're living in, it's an imagination. It's an imaginary world, man. It ain't real, man. We're living in an imaginary world, man. It say, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through power to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of power, and bring it into obedience, and bring it into captivity, Every thought to the obedience of a mashiach. What's the what's what's the bringing into captivity? Every thought to the obedience, the elect of Israel, right? <clears throat> this is um. Got to read this second Ezra six and twenty seven. How are we bringing down the strongholds? It said, "For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through the power, through power to the putting down the strongholds." What's putting down the strongholds? And the imaginations of this world. Truth. Right? John 8 and 32. You shall know the truth. And the truth shall, shall, shall make you free. Right? Second Ezra 6 and 27. For evil shall be put out. And deceit shall be quenched. As for faith. It shall flourish. Corruption shall be overcome. And the truth. Which have been so long without fruit. Shall be declared. So we are putting down strongholds of religion. The philosophies of the world with what? With truth, man. So only thing they have is slander, man. Only thing they can do is take down brother pages, strike brother pages, and slander us in the media. What is said on the back of this Esau Edom book? They main thing, this is what they can do. It's a disanalysis of the history and prophecy of Esau and his descendants will unveil many of the problems in this world, they really is all the problems of this world, and will bring a new perspective on wars and conflicts, media bias, Zionism, political conspiracies, anti-Semitism, economic problems, and Jewish issues. You see that? <laughs> this book, I was just reading this book today, man. Hey, is Hey, this everything is in this book, man. You see? And they done dropped the book back down to $18. Because it was like, the book was like $3,500 on Amazon, man. They done dropped it back down now. Why? Because the truth is out. The truth is out. Everybody know who Esau Edom is, man. So why would you jack the prices up? Well, it's just possible it could go back up. It's possible. Hey. Everybody know who you is according, that's according, and that's just according to the Bible alone, man. We don't need no other books. Hey, so Lord was edified. Today's time I say shalom. Wa a ba ba ba. The water for tuning in. The water for the precepts. May you have a shima with shaka team. Bless you in your houses. Stay prayed up. And again, like uh, Elder Manatazak Ba said the other day, you lied about the lies that you lied about. Hey, Shalom. Shalom, Mark. You have about your shot, Brakata. Shalom, brother. Yeah, man. You lied about the lies that you lied about, man. Why? Because you were the devil, man. Shalom.